Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. And in this video, we are going to chat about chains, chain wear, and some simple tips and techniques to get you out of a bad situation or to avoid that bad situation in the first place. A chain is the lifeblood of your drivetrain. Obviously, each bit and part of your drivetrain is as important as the next, but the chain is the most important because it connects every piece together. So as bike packers and cyclists that just ride their bike a lot, chains tend to wear out more frequently. So that's something that we need to check. While chain technology has come a long way, it's something that should be monitored. So what is chain wear exactly? So chain wear is when the pins and rollers wear down, creating the appearance that the chain is actually stretching out. This happens over time, over a longer period of time, or it can happen prematurely when you're riding through uh, rough, muddy, mucky conditions. So riding on a worn out chain will not only prematurely wear down your cassette and your chain rings, but it's going to also create drivetrain inconsistencies, such as skipping, maybe some improper shifting. But what also happens is that chain will then manipulate the teeth of the cassette and the chain rings, which will render it useless once you actually replace the chain. And once you ride a chain beyond a certain point, all of this stuff will need to be replaced and that definitely can be expensive. All right, so I am going to share two ways of checking your chain's wear. The first one is pretty darn simple. So we're just going to pull the chain off the front chain ring and see if there's any daylight. So what you're gonna wanna do is throw your chain in the smallest cog in your cassette and your biggest chain ring up front. Essentially, all you're gonna wanna do is just pull the chain off the front chain ring. What this is doing is those rollers and those pins, it's checking to see how much that stretches. There should be quite a bit of tension on the front chain ring when you have a brand new chain, but over time it's gonna wear out. And so if you can see quite a bit of daylight through that chain or the chain ring, then you know that you probably should go to a bike shop or potentially see if you can somehow check your chain with a chain wear tool. In this case, I'm pulling off the chain and I almost can take it over a few teeth of the chain ring, which is definitely a pretty big red flag. That's the first technique, and it's a great technique if you don't have a chain checker tool or if you're just out in the field. The second technique is using a chain checker. So the chain checker I have, I think it's like $9 from your local bike shop. It's the Park Tool CC 3.2. This is a great tool because it is simple, it's small, if you really wanted to, you could carry it with you if you're doing a big international trip. The wear indicators on this tool are 0.5 and 0.75. So it means that it's 0.5% worn or 0.75% worn. So what you end up doing is you place the tool in an interlink, and that's just to ensure that the checker doesn't get caught up, and then you'll drop it into an outer link. So this dropped easily into an outer link at 0.5%. So essentially that means that this chain is at least 0.5% worn. So then we're gonna just flip it over and see if it's 0.75% worn, and sure enough, it's 0.75% worn. So Park Tool recommends that if the chain does drop into the 0.5, if you have an 11 or 12 speed chain, you should change it. If it does drop into the 0.75, that is a good indication that your chain and maybe even your drivetrain needs to be replaced. There is another tool from Park Tool that measures uh, 1% wear. If your 10 speed and below drop into the 1% worn category, then you may have to consider changing out your whole drivetrain. So as far as replacing the chain, every bike is different. Every manufacturer has different recommendations. So I'm not necessarily going to show you how to uh, replace your chain. What I am gonna tell you is use your resources. So I have a chain here that I'm going to have to replace. Yes, it's worn out, but still I can get a good idea if I lay it out on my bench here and see how long it is. So I'm just gonna basically mimic this chain length with my new chain so I get an idea of what length I need. All right, so bike packers, what do you need to bring in your repair kit that's chain related? First and foremost, I do not carry an extra chain 
if I was touring around the world uh, and I was with a group, maybe for everyday bike packing, I'm definitely not carrying an extra chain. What I am carrying is a link or a few links together. And this is nice so that basically we can maybe do a little bit of surgery on the chain. Say if a handful of the links end up breaking and we want to still maintain the full range of gears in the back, what we can do is essentially use two power links and basically put this within the chain. So power links are great. Power links, master links, whatever you want to call them. KMC, Shimano, and SRAM all use power links now, which is great. In the past, Shimano used to use pins where you had to break off an end of a pin and it was really difficult to do in the field. So while many of the quick links, master links, uh, are said to be single use only, I have used these master links or quick links multiple times on the life of the chain. So maybe three or four times with no issues. So I like to carry two, if not three sets of power master links at all times. The next thing is pack pliers. So these are from Wolf Tooth Components and this is great because it will actually allow you to undo a power link, a master link, or it will also help you tighten one down. It's a great tool because it stores two sets of links in here. It also is a tire lever, and then it also removes a valve core for you, which is pretty cool. So this is a regular quick link tool from Park Tool. While uh, this is still relatively small in comparison to some other tools, it does definitely wouldn't find my repair kit just because it is a little bit more bulky. That's why I really do love my pack pliers. In alternative to using pack pliers, some people have said that they've used string before, a shoelace, a spare shifter cable to basically break the quick link. And that all works, but this is definitely far easier. The other thing is having a tool that has a proper chain breaker. Not only is it a good idea to have a tool that fixes or tightens or loosens every single bolt on your bike, but you want to have a pretty decent chain break tool. So I have a handful here. This one's from Crank Brothers, which is all right. This is one from Y Cycles. But my favorite one is this one from Topeak, and it's the Alien. Not only is it a great chain brake tool, but it comes with anything I need to fix this bike. So this is a great tool for bike packers. The other thing that I always have in my repair kit that is super important, especially on multi-day bike packing trips, is chain lube. And this is something that I will put on my chain once a day, potentially more than that. Uh, depending on conditions and whatnot. So making sure your chain is not only lubricated in dry conditions, but also wet conditions will help the performance of shifting and help the performance of your chain, which will actually end up keeping your chain and your drivetrain in working order for a longer period of time. And the next thing is bringing an extra derailleur hanger. Sure, this is not a part of your chain, but it is a big part of your drivetrain. If you do not have a functioning derailleur hanger, you probably do not have a functioning rear derailleur, which means you do not have shifting capabilities. All right, so just a few quick tips before we actually dive into some experiments on this chain and on this bike. First and foremost, having and making sure that your rear derailleur and front derailleur for that matter are indexed properly and the limits are set is super important. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but making sure that you have your limit set up so that your chain doesn't fall into your spoke or the chain doesn't fall into the frame is super important. So also knowing how to adjust your barrel, which is basically allowing you to micro adjust uh, the cable tension of your shifting. So essentially after a while, uh, the cable in your shifting will stretch out, especially after a new cable is installed. For drop bar bikes, most of the barrels are on the rear derailleur, and so you'll adjust it that way. And on mountain bikes, most of the barrels are actually right on the, the shifter on the bar. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take a closer look at the chain and show you a few things that you should definitely know how to do, including just breaking the chain, breaking a quick link, and a few other things. All right, so what we're gonna do first is basically just take this chain off. So using pack pliers to remove a a quick link, all we have to do is insert them into the inner links on the outside of the quick link itself. Squeeze down on the pack plier 
and it should release the uh, the quick link. The leverage on the pack plier is not nearly as good as the leverage on the regular quick link tool, but it does the trick. There you go. And that took quite a bit of effort. I actually had to put two hands on it to squeeze it, but then it's released. So at this point, take off some slack in the chain itself on the derailleur so it doesn't whip back. And there you go. And then to reset the chain, you grab both sides of the chain with either hand. And then the best thing to do is to get these little pins inside the pin holder there, like so. Ah, there we go. And that's how you set a quick link. All right, so as you see here, I've got pretty drastic failures. So essentially what happens sometimes with chains is there's a weak point on them and they just completely fail. Or sometimes you can bash them against a rock. And what I need to do is now break the chain. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. Insert the chain into the chain breaker tool. And if there is a backing of the chain breaker tool, that's what you're gonna wanna put it in just so that you actually have easier leverage. All you're gonna do is just make sure it's lined up and then just screw it. And that's the seal of the pin being removed from the chain, breaking off. So push it all the way through, remove this pin extractor, and then you've got a few parts here. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we need the inner plate of the chain to be accessible so that we can put a, a quick link in. And then we also need the other side. So now that we have these two interlinks exposed, what we're gonna to wanna to do is insert the quick links like I just showed you. So we'll get those quick links out. When you are installing quick links, just make sure to follow the proper orientation on the quick link itself. Many quick links have arrows on them, Shimano and SRAM, and that arrow should follow the drivetrain direction when you are pedaling your bike. That being said, KMC does not require a specific orientation. Uh, you could just throw them on without thinking about it. The reason I carry around extra chain is because when I have a failure like this and or multiple links that fail or that get destroyed, uh, say this happened to this whole set, then I can actually insert this chain link into the chain so that it will create a full chain length to cover all of my gears again. So essentially what I would do is connect the quick link down here and the quick link up here so that I have the full length of chain again. Uh, and that's really nice when you're uh, gonna be away from services for a while. You definitely need that granny gear. You need the biggest cog in the back uh, so that you can climb. That being said, you need to carry enough quick links. So always carry at least three quick links uh, because you may have to use two of them in a short period of time and you'll still want an extra one just in case something happens. Here's another fun trick. What I want to do if you don't have a quick link left and you need to uh, replace or fix a part of your chain, you're going to have to sacrifice some length no matter what. But what you can do is extract a pin to this point on your chain like so. And then we're, what we're gonna do is basically fit it into the existing part of the chain and then get our chain tool. And in this case, we're going to install this pin to the, the main part of the chain. And this is only gonna be a temporary fix. And sometimes the pins don't set in right either. You really wanna be meticulous about the pin fit and everything like that. So you get it to this point right here, you tighten it down and in. You just want to be really gentle. And then you get to a point where you feel resistance and then you stop. Don't go beyond that point. It's not bending as well as some of these other links here, but it's going to get me to a bike shop. All right, so the last thing I'm going to share with you is how to set up a bike single speed if your derailleur hanger breaks or your derailleur itself breaks. So there's a few things that you need in order to do this. And the biggest thing is patience, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you want to get going, you just need to take your time. So take a deep breath. The second thing is you're going to want to get rid of the derailleur, the hanger. If the hanger is broken, if the cable and housing is in the way, you're going to want to make sure that's out of the way. The other thing is if it's a two by, you're going to want to put it on the smallest ring up front. And then obviously just making sure that you have a straight chain line and that will kind of dictate what gear ratio you can uh, actually run on the bike. In this circumstance, the straightest chain line is gonna be a 30 tooth up front with my 30 tooth chain ring up front and an 18 in the back. And that will definitely get the job done. While I might wanna use the 20 tooth, especially with a bike packing rig, so you really have to take what you can get. And obviously we could get into gear inches and 
the whole single speed uh, rabbit hole. And we're not going to do that today. But in general, uh, you just got to take what you can get when uh, when you're just trying to get out of a bad situation. So your next step here is to measure up and see if this ratio will work with your chain. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit looser than say a normal single speed chain because you're not going to be able to tension it properly. But you want to make sure it's really tight at the same time or as tight as it can be. All right, so once you determined the proper chain line, the cog that you want, or, or the cog that works with your chain line and the chain length, then go ahead and break your chain. So if you're using a quick link, you're gonna to wanna to ensure that these two sides are exposed to interlinks. If you are using an outer link, then you can get away with you just pushing the pin like I just showed you and making sure that you don't push the pin all the way through that uh, outer part of the outer link. I wanna show you, when you do break these pins out and keep them within the, uh, the outer link, Having a little bit of the pin on the inside of that outer link is nice because then it will help keep it in there so that you don't have to hold on to all of them while you actually install the pin. So now the chain's broken and all I'm gonna do is push the pin back into the uh, chain gently. That is how you set it up single speed. Obviously it's not perfect, you know, there's a lot of slack, but if you're gentle on your drivetrain, if you pedal softly, you will be able to get to a bike shop or a town. If you do have adjustable dropouts, at this point, you can tension your chain so that it's not as loose. And that's the nice thing about riding a bike with adjustable dropouts. All right, folks, now it is your turn to share with us your chain horror stories. So make sure to put them in the comment section below with how you resolved your situation. And if you have yet to do so and you like what you see here or have learned something, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. That only helps us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, pedal further. We'll see you.